Now that we have looked at the different kinds of attributes of ideas, let us look deeper into the different types of ideas. The most common ideas which all humans get are called sensible or corporal ideas because they are derived originally from our senses and it is the communication from our body to the soul and spirit. Colors, sounds, tastes, figures, shapes, heat, cold, soft, hard, sweet, bitter, etc. These are examples of sensible ideas. We get them through the senses. Intellectual ideas, also called spiritual ideas, but not in the religious sense, are those which we gain by reflecting on the nature and action of our own souls and turning our thoughts within ourselves and observing what is transacted and what goes on in our own mind. For example, thought, assent or agreement, disagreement, judging, reasoning, knowledge, understanding, will, love, fear, hope. These are examples of intellectual ideas. The intellectual ideas contemplates things that come from outside of itself. When our soul contemplates and thinks about the ideas that we've gained through our senses, when it thinks about them on the inside, that is when they become intellectual ideas. For example, a blind man has no spiritual or intellectual concept of color because these are derived through the senses. A deaf man has no intellectual concept of sound because that is derived through the senses. Again, intellectual ideas are our mind thinking and reflecting on what information our mind and spirit has received from the body. Absolute, general, universal, abstracted ideas are ideas that are considered in themselves without respect to any others. For example, the terms that we've already looked at, mode, accident, essence, existence, these are considered by themselves without respect to any other ideas. Relative abstracted ideas is where we compare several different things together and we are considering the relation of one thing to another rather than the subject of those relations. For example, cause and effect, likeness, unlikeness, subject, object, identity, these are relative abstracted ideas that we get based on the relation of one thing to another. Those are the categories of ideas. Now let us look at the types of ideas. A simple idea is one uniform idea which cannot be divided or distinguished by the mind of man into two or more ideas. For example, sweet, bitter, cold, heat, red, blue, thought, knowledge, these are simple ideas. They cannot be divided and broken down any further. A complex idea is made by joining two or more simple ideas together. For example, a triangle is three angles. Cube, table, writing, truth, falsehood. These are complex ideas because they join simple ideas together. Compound ideas are when different kinds of ideas are joined together to be considered a new being. For example, the idea of man is the compound of body and spirit. To make a new idea, man. Another compound idea would be medicine, because it is a compound of separate herbs that are combined to make one new medicine. Also, harmony would be an example of compound ideas, where different sounds are gathered together to make a new being, harmony. A collective idea is when many ideas of the same kind are joined together and united in one name or under one view. For example, the idea of army is combining soldiers. They're all the same idea, but when we join them together, it makes a new idea, a collective idea army. Other examples of collective ideas would be parliament, dictionary, flock, forest, city, month, thousand. 
those are collective ideas because they are joining together ideas of the same kind. Particular ideas are ideas that represent one thing only. For example, when we say the Apostle Peter, we know that we are talking about only one thing only. When we say Jesus Christ, we are referring to one person only. When we say this book or that river, we are referring to a particular idea. It refers to one thing only. The object of any particular idea is called the individual. A universal idea represents a common nature that agrees to several particular things. For example, when we say horse, we have a general common knowledge of horse, but it's not a particular idea because we're not referring about a particular type of horse or a particular color. Horse by itself is a universal idea. It's a very common, broad idea. Another example would be man or book. We know what you're talking about, but it's still not a particular idea. Real ideas have a foundation in nature, and they often have real objects as examples, which may exist or may have existed. Imaginary ideas are when we take real ideas in our mind, and by manipulating them and enlarging or diminishing them, we have created objects which did not or never will ever exist, even though their different parts may have been borrowed from real objects. For example, when we think of a flying horse, we've taken the ideas of flying and horse and combined them, even though that is not a real idea. Or when we think of a mouse the size of an elephant, we've taken real ideas, but we've made them imaginary because they will never exist in that form, or never have, either. Impossible ideas are ideas that are completely inconsistent with the ideas with which we've joined them. For example, the idea of heaven without holiness is an impossible. Another example of impossible would be a pious man without honesty. Those ideas cannot go together. Another example of an impossible would be life coming from non-life by itself. Knowing the different types of ideas helps us to identify where an idea is coming from, whether the source can be fallible, whether it can be drawn from wrong sources, etc. Old advice states that one should not go to market while they are hungry. This is a warning because the stomach, which is our senses, will communicate quite actively with the soul and mind to make rash decisions. However, knowledge of the fact that your senses are lobbying your brain Make sure you're aware that you should not think with your stomach, but you should think with your market list.